Region play opened a day early for the Rockmart Yellow Jackets, and the squad was out to prove they are the best in 7AA against a traditional area foe. Highlights from the sidelines coming up after a word from our sponsor. This week's 7 Highlight Reel is brought to you by Alvis Miller and Son Funeral Home in Rockmart. This local funeral home has been serving Polk County residents for three generations and are here to help you and your family when you need them in the years to come. Learn about the services they offer at alvismillerandsonfuneralhome.com or check out the link in the description for more. We thank Alvis Miller and Son Funeral Home in Rockmart for their support of local news and sports content like this on Polk Today and PolkSportsWire.com. Week 7 of the season was wreck night for Rockmar, and the youth came out to enjoy a brief moment in the spotlight alongside their older companions on the gridiron. Jackets came into this one 2-2 two and, two and needed a win to set the standard for the beginning of their region play, which began last week in 7AA. Jackets hosted the Model Blue Devils this week, who won in their first region matchup, but soon found themselves outmatched in the Tuesday night contest. Let's jump right into this one. First quarter, Jackets received the kickoff and started start driving and eating time off the play clock. Check out this J.D. Davis scramble towards the sidelines for a first down play. Davis has a great ability to make plays not just in the air, but on the ground when a receiver isn't available. Great job, J.D. Davis. Later on in the first drive, this one got crazy for the Jackets, but turned into gold thanks to quick thinking of J.D. Davis again. Rockmart ball. First, it looks like a fake handoff to Tristan Anderson, who then goes out for the pass and picked up some yardage for the Jackets, enough for a first down. While Anderson is getting tackled, the ball pops out, and and look who is on top of it. J.D. Davis goes for a touchdown and the first score of the night. PAT puts the Jackets up 7-0. Next possession, Jackets are in scoring position and the handoff goes to Cam Ferguson who rambles his way in past the model defense for a touchdown. PAT gets blocked on that one. Rockmart up 13-0. Model ball, Jake Sanders under center. He ends it off to A.J. Woods who is met by a huge wall of the Jacket defense. He doesn't get far nor does model's offense in the first half. Jumping ahead, second quarter, Rockmart ball and here comes Cam Ferguson again for his second touchdown of the night and from short yardage to boot he barely gets touched on both plays great job cam jackets up 20 nothing okay continuing on the touchdown play second quarter's jackets up 20 to 7 after a bad call and touchdown you can watch here on youtube handoff goes to tyshawn johnson who gets a short yardage touchdown of his own for the night in response to model rock mart up 27 7 after the pat second quarter model punting off and i've been waiting for this one dennis sims receives it and he gets some good blocking and helps himself with some shoves and gets into the end zone for a touchdown. Flag after the play goes against Model. Jackets up 34-7. Okay, last one before halftime. Model is throwing and looking for a miracle before the buzzer and uh-oh. Here's Tristan Anderson snatching this one up but is tackled after the clock expires for halftime. Great pick off Tristan. Third quarter, Model ball and they are driving and handoff goes to AJ Woods. Uh-oh, he loses the ball before his knee comes down and Dennis Sims is there to pounce on top of it and he goes in 4-6. Camera angle wasn't great but what a huge play for Dennis. Two scores for him on the night. 41-7 Rockmart. Last score for Rockmart. J.D. Davis calls his own number and he winds his way in for a touchdown of his own. Second one for him as well. Jackets go up 48-7. One more play. Younger kids in. Look at Maxon Ware on this one. He gets the reverse handoff and watch the freshman get big yardage as the clock is winding down a model. Blue Devils would score twice but it was not nearly enough to stop the Jackets. Rockmart wins in this one convincing fashion. 48-14 final score. They are now 1-0 and in region play tied with Fanta County and North Murray Jackets moved to 3-2 and two overall on the year. The first time that's happened in a while. Here's some post-game comments from Coach Parson. Well, that's, it, it, you start region play and that's when it gets serious. And, uh, you know, we had an off week and, you know, a lot of things have happened that ain't happened in a long time. We, we, we're 0-2 at home for the first time in, in my tenure here. So, you know, we had to we had to really fix some things this week and the last two weeks and, and get our guys back to playing Rockmark football. Uh, you know, Model's got a good team and they, they they did some things to us that we didn't expect. And uh, our, our kids were resilient. They, we we tried to fix it on the sideline. We had some really good plays on defense. We had a you know a couple picks. We had a scoop and score. We had a punt return. So obviously, when you can get those and then the ball game, that helps a lot. So uh, proud of our guys to. Uh, Kind of withstand being off this week and uh, out of school this week. A lot of a lot of things that can come into play, but uh, kids played well, and now we got to regroup and get Harrelson for homecoming. And you know it's going to be Smash Mouth football from what they do. Rockmart is back next week for homecoming. The court has a special message for Jacket Nation, by the way. Go Jackets! 
Don't forget the special video we made post game for the bad call that was made in the second quarter. Check it out on your favorite social media platform, including here on YouTube. We'd appreciate a subscribe if you can take time to do that. Okay, now it's time to look at some other squads and how they fared for the week. It's time for the scoreboard. The area scoreboard is split this week between Thursday and Friday night showdowns, so let's recap where we stood only for the Thursday games in this part one episode. Let's we'll start with seven AA region play. Rebels had no trouble with the Warriors. Harrelson wins 42 to 12. North Murray and Murray play Friday night. In 7-4A, Heritage Generals take a huge victory in their region opener over Southeast Whitfield. 56 to 12 win for the Generals in the route. Sonorville plays Northwest Friday night. Now let's take a look at some other area games. Dalton at Hiram. Somehow this one got into a real tangle. Cats win 52-45. Hiram and Dalton still have a lot of football to play for the postseason. We'll see how that fares. Chattooga versus Armurchie. The Indians from Floyd County have a huge win. 54-21 in this region matchup. Darlington wins 38-7 over Coosa. They may be improving, but take it week by week, Eagles. Tigers continue to dominate. They should be region title winners. I'll be surprised if they ain't. Woodstock versus Rome. Big game for the Wolves. 70 to nothing score. That has to be a record for Rome High. Walton 51. North Paulding 49. Too bad, Wolfpack. Better luck next week. Noonan 31. East Paulding 14. Yikes. Not good, Raiders. Not good. Good. South Paulding defeats Paulding County by two touchdowns, 48-35. Spartans get one over on the Patriots. Cass 49, Woodwind 12. Anyone surprised? Anyone? Yeah, me neither. Final score from Thursday night, and this one is an oh my god, what happened here game. Calhoun versus Cartersville, feature game of the week. This one went into overtime for a huge win for Calhoun, 50 to 48 after three overtime periods. Cartersville won 62 games in a row in region play before the Canes finally made landfall and lost one. Craziest dang news I've heard yet. Okay, sports fans, that does it for week seven, part one. Tune in for more coverage of Central at Cedartown coming up as soon as possible. I'm Kevin, the editor. We'll be back with more from the sidelines in the next Polk Sports Wire video.